Hello and welcome to another episode of the CFS Health Recovery Podcast. This is where we talk about practical tools to help you with your recovery. Before we get into today's session, which we are going to cover the topic of baseline. It's probably the most important topic, to be honest. Last episode, we covered a little bit about movement. And at the end of the session, I basically said that it all gets tied back into your baseline. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to expand on what baseline is, what it means, and how to apply it in your life. Before we do that, I want to give a big shout out to Win of the Week, to a bunch of fantastic members who have been on our game plan sessions. Now, these are people who have been in our mentorship program for a minimum of five months, if not a little bit longer. And it was so powerful because we got a bunch of them on in a small group all across the world, like America, Asia, New Zealand, all the way over to Europe for our nighttime sessions. And it was just really, really cool. And it was so amazing to hear all the wins that these guys have had since joining the program. But what was really interesting, it wasn't just about physical wins. It was about emotional wins. It was about having better boundaries. It was about putting themselves first. It was about feeling better within themselves. It was about loving themselves more, being more compassionate to themselves. And whilst there was some really great physical ones, I found that the, I guess the emotional ones were quite profound and life changing because not only does it change their life right now, but it changes their life for the future too. So a big shout out to December game planners. You guys know who you are. Let's get into today's conversation around baseline. Baseline was originally mentioned to me through Dr. Lionel Lubitz. And there wasn't really a framework to it, but he said this line to me many, many years ago, almost two decades ago, actually. He said, you know, Toby, you can't do too much, but you can't do too little. And you have to find the sweet spot within there. And ultimately what he was talking about was baseline, finding your baseline. Now, what does baseline mean? Baseline means being able to do what you can without feeling any worse than you currently do. Being able to do what you can, perform what you can do without feeling any worse than you currently do. And why is this so important? Well, most people with chronic fatigue syndrome and other chronic illnesses, they're pushing and crashing all the time. One day's feeling fantastic. I've got all the energy in the world. And so I'm going to go and do everything I possibly can to then feeling absolute rubbish for the next seven days straight. And so there's this boom and bust cycle. The push and crash cycle is what we call it. And the problem is there's no tools or frameworks to contain the energy that you have and to help you be consistent and not push and crash all the time because the problem with pushing and crashing isn't just the actual physical effects, but I think it's the emotional effects that come with it. Feeling horrible, feeling down, feeling like you've failed, feeling like when's this going to end? You know, not only is it compromising your immune system and compromising your health, but it's also compromising your emotional well-being. And so we find that baseline is one of the fastest ways to decrease this emotional chaos that happens that is an after effect of the physical impacts of pushing and crashing that can have on you. And when you've mastered your baseline, you know what to do when to do it. And the great thing about baseline is it's not fixed and it's a theory and it's a theory to help you stabilize. Unfortunately, a lot of people, even when people join our program, sometimes they think I've got to get the perfect baseline. There's this one little perfect baseline that once I get it, I'm going to feel freaking amazing all the time. It's simply not true. Here's the thing. You can't wait to get better. Yeah. So a lot of people think that they need to wait for all their symptoms to go to, they need to wait and wait and wait until they feel good to get better. The opposite is true. You can't wait to get better. You have to do the stuff now to get better later. And here's the thing, please do not wait for energy to come for you to start doing stuff because you can't focus on energy, right? 
You don't have energy. Your body doesn't have energy. So you waiting for energy to come is like waiting for the next 10 years and expecting change to happen and nothing happening. Instead, we need to focus on strength and stamina and capacity. Stamina and capacity are my two kind of go-to words because energy comes usually later on. As you start to enter stage three and you start to live life again, more energy will come. But initially it's all about building and reconditioning your body in an appropriate manner so you can build strength and stamina and move forwards. Now, the whole idea about baseline is so you don't push beyond your means. So we have a rule of thumb where we say, you know, less is more initially. Why we say that is because most people that we meet, you know, they type A personalities, they're overachievers, they're doers, and they find it really hard not to get every little bit out of themselves. And instead, what they need to do is have a less is more approach with consistency over intensity. See, the problem is most people, they have these intense bursts of energy and then they drop off and fade and feel shit outs and then they go again and then they feel crap. And so we call this downward spiral, the valley of death. And I'm going to draw this on my iPad now so you can see it if you're watching this on YouTube. I want you to imagine there's like a line in the middle of the page and that would be our baseline and the little circle on the left hand side is where you're at. Let's say you feel really good. So you go, yay, I feel amazing. I'm going to do everything today. Everything that's on my to-do list, I'm going to do it all in one day. Does this sound like you? Most probably. <laughs> what happens is we expend all our energy. We expend all our energy credits way beyond our means. And then we push and then we simply crash and we come crashing down here. And this low point here is what we call the valley of death. And why we call it that is because that's what it actually feels like. So it feels kind of like, oh my God, my body's dying. All the symptoms are on fire. You feel horrible. And we call it the valley of death. And what happens over time, and everyone's different depending on their capacity, they get back up to their baseline and then they repeat the cycle. So it's this constant up and down battle, which we don't really want. Instead, what we want to do is a baseline should look more like this. So let's say, by the way, if you're listening to this on podcast, you might want to go watch the video recording of this. But let's say we have a flat line again in the middle. And rather than having these huge ups and downs, what we want to do is actually initially maintain our baseline. And what that means is our health is maintaining. When your health is maintaining, it's meaning you're not getting a cold and flu every second week. You're not, you know, having one step forwards, four steps back. You're kind of just, you know, doing okay. You're finding some strings of consistency here. Now, once you've maintained your current baseline, you can progress a little bit. Then you maintain that new level. Then you go up again, and then you go up again. And you'll see here, there's a nice correlation in terms of a middle line of progress. And this is what we call the sweet spot. And so a lot of people miss this maintenance stage. So we've got to progress, then we've got to maintain, we've got to progress, then we've got to maintain. And everyone's different. For instance, we have clients in our program. It takes them probably two months to really understand the baseline theory, embody it and live it. Two to three months, sometimes longer. And again, it's not a time. If you're sitting here going, oh, I haven't found it. it's been 10 months now. Well, stop beating yourself up. You know, this video is perfect for you because you're going to take away some great tools here. So let's say a client's done really well. They've progressed quite a lot over the last few months. We get them on a coaching call. The first thing I'll probably say to them is, okay, for the next month, we're not progressing. I want you to maintain and just enjoy what you're doing. So many people are too focused on progress that they forget to do the maintenance stuff and just stay conditioned and keep doing what's working. And they stop and they chase shiny objects and they go back in circles. So we really want this nice, slow, steady approach that's building upwards as your strength and capacity expands. And as I said before, over time, energy will come back. But usually what happens is as your health increases, which feels great, your symptoms actually decrease yeah so as you get healthy and stronger strength and stamina goes up symptoms and suffering goes down this is because your sleep's getting better your digestive system's getting better you're doing the right things appropriately so your energy expenditure is really dialed in and overall it's breeding this feeling of health in your body 
And so that's going to again improve your immune system, your health will maintain, and you can progress even further. So here's the thing though what got you here won't get you there and so this is where i see a lot of people get stuck with baseline they think that they have to get this perfect baseline sorted they think that they have to do less is more forever and it's simply not true as you enter into stage two of recovery which is a tired and wide stage you're going to have energy in your system that needs to be expended it's just that you need to do the right amount most people either do too little or do too much and you want to find that sweet spot for you and you'll know because you'll be sleeping more consistently you'll be pooping better so your digestive system will be better we have a whole progress video inside our program one of the key signs of good progress is healthy poo so there's so many things that can give you feedback if it's working or not but if you're swinging up and down all the time you really need to get serious about being consistent accountability and consistency is the key Otherwise, you're just going to keep doing this merry-go-round for forever and you're going to be pretty upset about it. You want to play the long game. But in stage two and stage three, there's energy to be used. So less is more just initially. It's not forever. And then as you get into stage two and three, we actually want you to do more. We want you to use the energy because by the end of the day, we want you to get to the point where you're good tired. Good tired means, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten o'clock at night, your brain's kind of going, okay, it's time for sleep now. Your body's going, it's time for sleep now. And it's feeling good about it. And that's what we actually want to get to. And so part of this is within your baseline, finding the activities that are useful and enhancing for you and the ones that actually aren't good for you. So if we draw it back all the way down to the simplicity, really what we need to do initially is to figure out well, what's appropriate for me right now and what's not appropriate for me right now. Let's say that you know, for you right now, socializing or going to a big event, it totally wipes you out. It's a common complaint that we have with our members. They just want to be able to go to a wedding and feel totally fine. And so initially, you know, you would not be saying yes to all these big events all the time. You'd be saying no and you'd be building up your capacity slowly but surely. And then, of course, you know, when we have this all the time, six, 12 months down the line, you can go to the wedding and dance and feel good about it. We have this all the time in our program, like people posting wins about these weddings and these events and these parties that they're going to all the time. But they had to build up appropriately first. So strength, stamina, capacity first, energy comes second. You don't want to be focusing on the wrong things at the wrong time. And again, you need to let go and loosen the grip when you're in stage two and three. You don't need to micromanage like you had to initially just to pull back to stop the push crash. Once you stop the pushing and crashing and you've stabilized, that's when you want to loosen the grip and allow. Stop being so micromanaged and literally managing every second of your day. We don't believe in micromanaging at CFS Health. Sometimes on the rare occasion, it can be very useful initially, for a very short period of time. In fact, I've told clients to throw away their freaking micromanaged planner that they've been doing for five years and haven't been getting anywhere because it's exhausting them. And it's a job on top of a job that they've already got. And what they're currently experiencing is hard enough. They don't need a job on top of it. So again, if you're tracking, it's totally fine as long as it's useful and enhancing your health. If you're finding that it's exhausting you and it's just like not getting you anywhere, we tend to say stop doing it. Yeah. It doesn't say we don't track inside the program. We do. We have our daily tracker that people can use for two to four weeks at a time to get data. Once you've got the data, then you can make decisions. But this holding on with a microscope every day for the rest of your life, do healthy people do that? No. So we want to, again, have a good framework to follow, which is the baseline theory. But depending on what stage you're at, we have to change the rules a little bit. Stage two and stage three, integrating back into life. This is where we start to not even think about baseline. We just start to really expand on what we've done in the past. And then we build up more and more and more. And as your capacity gets better, so does your capacity to handle more load, as in physiological stress, mental, emotional stress. Therefore, you can do more and feel okay. So depending on where you're at is going to be dependent on what you do. But initially, if you're like, holy cow, Toby, how do I find my baseline? Write a list on one side of everything that feels appropriate for you right now. Write a list of everything that doesn't feel appropriate right now. 
write a list of things that add energy in. So for instance, in our program, we have a whole section of restorative breathing exercises that adds and restores energy back into you. So that would be one thing that you'd be adding into your daily routine every day. Daily routine and structure is so important and is so underrated. We have a set yourself up for success training on your daily routine. And really it's going from what time you wake up to what time you go to bed and then everything in between, including meal times, including downtime, including movement time. And once you start living that, it's really a game changer. But here's the kicker. You have to be accountable to it. And I know the biggest problem that a lot of people have is that they want to do all this stuff, but they don't do it. And it's because they don't plan for it. They don't intend it. So one of the things, again, that I would highly recommend is intending for it every single day. Like we have a daily planner, a custom one that gets delivered to our member's door. And it's freaking amazing. It sets your whole day up for success. You have intentions for the day. You have a gratitude list. You have a focus. You have a to be focus. And then you can just, you know, slowly ease into it as you feel it's appropriate. Of course, you don't have to do it all, but you're way more likely to do the right things for yourself when it's ahead of you and you're looking at it and planning for it versus, oh yeah, I might do that tomorrow based off how I feel. But the problem is it changes every day. And so you don't end up doing anything. And then the day runs you, you don't run the day. We have hours and hours of training on this stuff inside our program. So I can't cover it in a simple one episode podcast but i've given you some really helpful theories and tips to follow along to start applying this in your life and it's funny because even people who aren't in our program like i see comments on youtube all the time and in our free facebook group just from this advice they've changed their life they're like oh my god toby i've been following your free baseline training for the last three months and i've gone from this to that and i'm feeling so much better so this stuff works. You've just got to do it. I'll leave you with this. Less is more initially, not forever. Less is more initially, not forever. Remember, as your strength and capacity goes up, health goes up, symptoms decrease. Stop focusing on symptoms. Stop focusing on waiting to feel good to do something. You need to do what's appropriate for you right now. Be consistent with that and then build over time. And remember, we want to maintain progress, maintain progress. And honestly, it's a game changer. We've got a quote card deck inside our program. And one of the quotes is, don't tell me what you can't do. Tell me what you can do. And to be honest, I think that's the biggest problem that people face is they're focusing on everything they can't do. They're focusing on what they wish they could do and they're trying to do that too soon or they're giving up completely because they're just so focused on what they can't do they can't even see anything that they can do even though there are things they can do it's just that they're not putting their focus and attention on it so i'm going to leave you with that don't tell me what you can't do i want you to tell me what you can do and i want you to focus more on that i hope this was really helpful i'm sending you a ton of love and of course if you need help with your recovery feel free to reach out to the team at info at cfshelp.com. There's a few links on this page somewhere where you can fill out an application form and we can help you with this stuff. We can help you with so much more than just baseline. Baseline is just the starting point. Then your world opens up to possibility. And then from there, we can start to look at having a plan and a pathway and we can start to get progress to where you want to go in your life. Can't wait to speak to you again soon. All the best. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. I hope you found this episode of the podcast really, really helpful. Here are three ways we can help you whenever you are ready. So first of all, we have a free information group on Facebook. And so if you do have a Facebook account, make sure you go and join that group. There is strictly no negative venting. It's a very supportive, uplifting group. And there are some great trainings in there that can help you get started with your recovery. So it's called the CFS Health Recovery Information Group. There's a link here anyway, so click that link and join it. The second thing is we have a bunch of free trainings that will really help you understand where you're at, but also help you move forward. So we're gonna leave a bunch of free trainings for you. So click on that, we'll send it to your email and obviously you can watch them in your own time. And thirdly, we've just created a 15 minute chat link. So if you're someone who's like, man, this sounds really good, this is really helpful, I really want some personal help and you wanna have a step-by-step -step plan that will help you 
go from where you're at to where you want to be. We have opened up a few spots to have a 15 minute call, no strings attached. Basically this call is to see if or how we can help you. If we can, we'll be able to share with you some information on what that would look like. And if we can't, we'll send you some free resources that will help you if you would like to do that. So we're going to leave a link below. You can book in your 15 minute call. This is not a coaching call. So don't expect to get coaching in a 15 minute call. This call is really to have a conversation around you, what you need help with, and whether or not we can work together to help you get the results that you want. So if CFS Health, the mentorship program sounds something you're interested in, but you're just not quite sure about it yet, this is a perfect opportunity to book in that call, have a chat, and then of course we can go deeper if this is something that you would like to do. Hope you found the podcast helpful. Please leave some love, especially on the YouTube channel. Go and comment on the videos that you found helpful and appreciate all your support. And we look forward to speaking with you soon. All the best for now. Speak to you soon. Bye.